Tolu is my name. CKS is the show and TV Continental is the station. Welcome to the Continental Kiddies Show where learning is educative and entertaining. Now, today's show promises to be exciting, so stick around. Season's greetings from the Continental Kiddies Show. Who invented that? The microphone. Do you know you are able to hear my voice now because it has been recorded by a microphone? Or that every time you hear someone's voice over the radio or television, they are speaking to you through a microphone? Well, that's the amazing device responsible for capturing the voice of people from far and near to bring it to you. The microphone uses the vibrations in the air created when a person speaks to move a metallic coil inside a magnet to create electrical impulses that are then either recorded on a separate device or transmitted through the air to various parts of the world. The first ever microphone was created by using a stretched wire attached to the end of two cups. David Edward Hughes invented the carbon microphone in the 1870s and even though it wasn't the best yet, it was used in other inventions like the telephone. While the first microphone that enabled proper voice telephony was the loose contact carbon microphone developed by David Edward Hughes in England as well as Amelia Beliner and Thomas Edison in the United States. All these inventors worked to create the microphone but it was Thomas Edison, a serial inventor, who has over 3,000 inventions to his name. is the one who finally invented the best one and was granted the patent in 1877. His microphone was used in the first ever radio broadcast at the New York Metropolitan Opera House in 1910. Over the years, more and more inventors worked on the microphone, making better and better and better and better. And well, you get it. If you can hear my voice now, give a salute to Thomas Edison and all the great inventors that worked so hard to bring my voice to your ears. Isn't it time to invent something? It's up to you. Go create. Welcome back. Now, that was who invented that. I hope you were able to learn a thing or two from that. Children, I'm sure you did. Okay, now let's join Mr. Craig with our Spell It segment. I am as happy as a dog with two tails to tell you that over the next smattering of minutes, I'm going to be exploring the enchantment of English spelling. As always, we've got two spellers in the building, and they are Mustafa Larawaju from Fortune Private School. Mustafa is 12 years old, and uh, he likes reading novels and watching the news on television. And Olola Deba Bafemi. She's 12 years old. She's from Grace High School. And interestingly, she likes reading novels as well. I want both of you to know that you've got 20 seconds within which to produce the correct spelling of a given word. Cool? Right, so let's get the ball rolling. Mustafa, I'll begin with you. Your word is evening. E-V-E-N-I-E. NG. That's correct. Hello, <laughs> Lade. Your word is breakfast. B R E A K F A S T. That's correct. <laughs> Mustafa, your word was first used in the 12th century. It means coming after six other things in a series. The word is seventh. S E V E N T H. That's correct. <laughs> Hello, laddie. The Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary of Current English defines the word as, a lo as after a long time or to introduce the last in a series of things. It's an adverb. The word is finally. F-I-N-A-L-L-Y. That's correct. <laughs> Mustafa, your word is Saturday. 
S A T U R D A Y. That's correct. Lolade. According to the Cambridge International Dictionary of English, a word is defined as despite the fact that or but. It's a conjunction. The word is although. A L T H O U G H. Are you sure about that spelling? Do you know what? You're correct. Right, Mustafa. From the perspective of etymology, your word is French. It means, no, no. <laughs> your word is French from the perspective of origin or etymology, right? It means a discussion between two groups or countries. According to the phonetics of English, the word can be pronounced in just one way, and it has two syllables. The word is dialogue. D-I-A-L-O-U-G-E. Are you sure that's the correct spelling of dialogue? D-I what? D-I-A. Yeah? L-O-U-G-E. Sorry. That's not correct. Can you spell dialogue? D I A L O G U E. Are you sure that's the correct spelling of dialogue? Yes. You know what? You are absolutely correct. <laughs> Your word, Oladi, was first used in the 15th century. It means the state of being happy. The word is happiness. H-A-P-P-I-N-E-S-S. -S. Really? Is that a correct spelling of happiness? Yes. That's correct. <laughs> Mustafa. Your word is Latin. From the vantage point of pronunciation, there are three syllables. The word is a verb. The word is supersede. Supersede. Do you want the definition? Yes. Good. It means to take a place of something or somebody that is considered to be old-fashioned or no longer the best available. An instance is uh, the theory has been superseded by more recent research. Sup supersede. S-U-P-E-R-S-E-D-E. -E. That's correct. Hello, <laughs> lady. Your word is Latin. It means the way in which a language or a particular word or sound is pronounced. The word is pronunciation. P-R-O-N-O-N-C-I-A-T-I-O-N. Really? You want to try it again? Not a cat in hell's chance. That is not the correct spelling of pronunciation. Pronunciation. P-R-O-N-O-U-N-C-I-A-T-I-O-N. <laughs> it's quite a hard nut to crack. Pronunciation is P-R-O-N-U-N-C-I-A-T-I-O-N. Okay, now we've come to the very last round of this engagement. And uh, Mustafa, your word is... Counterfeit. C O U N T E R F E I T. Really? Is that a correct spelling of counterfeit? Yes. You know what? You're correct. <laughs> Alalade, your last word is an adjective. The word is embarrassing. E M. B-A-R... 
B A R S S I N G. Are you serious? Is that a correct spelling of embarrassing? Do you want to try again? Yes. Okay, go on. E M B A R A S S I N G. Under no circumstances, that is not the correct spelling of embarrassing. Embarrassing. E M B A R A S S I N G. Embarrassing is E M B A double R A double S I N G. Embarrassing. Well, after crunching the numbers, I'm chuffed to beat to tell you that Ololade Babafemi from Grace High School got a total of 22 points, while Mustafa Larawadu from Fortune Private School got a total of 25 points. So it's sufficiently clear that the winner is Mustafa Larawadu. Mustafa, congratulations to you. And uh, well, lady, congratulations to you as well. So I would want both of you to shake hands now in the spirit of sportsmanship. Go on, both of you. Very good, well done. That's great. Okay, it's been great and it's been fun, but our time here is done. See you again next time. Don't stop spelling. Bye-bye. <laughs>
I'm sure it's better than this. I'm very, very sure. Look at what they did. Nice, right? Okay, now remember, you've got to keep practicing. You never get better unless you practice. So draw, draw, draw all the time as much as you can, all right? And then we'll see you next time. Season's greetings from the Continental Kiddos Show. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Story Story Time on Continental Kiddies Show with the Big Daddy. Hello, children. Hello, Big Daddy. Hello, wonderful children. Hello, Big Daddy. Fantastic. Today, I'm going to tell you a story which is titled Tire the Musician. What's the title? Tire the Musician. Wonderful. Now, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a man whose name was uh, Taye. Taye was such a fantastic drummer. He was so good with the talking drum. So much that each time he picked this talking drum and played, everybody would gather around him and they would dance and dance and dance and enjoy themselves. But something very sad happened. His wife, Adebisi, fell ill and she died very sad. And Taye started to cry and cry and cry. Oh, my wife, Adebisi. Oh, my wife. He cried and his eyeballs almost bulged out from the sockets. And he told himself, look, I cannot continue to cry like this. I must do something about it. And he headed for the land of the spirits to look for his wife. When he got to the entrance of the land of the spirits, he met two spirits who were the gate men. And they looked at him and said, look at this human being. What are you doing here? Will you get out of here? Oh, he looked at them and picked his drum and started to play. How are you, my friend, Mr. Spirit? Mr. How do you do, Mr. Spirit? Me sing and dance with me, Mr. Spirit. Oh, these spirits danced and danced. In fact, they forgot where they were for that brief moment that I played this music. Uh -uh. And they looked at him, you played this drum so well. Okay, what can we do for you? He said to them, well, I have come to see your king so that he could return my wife at the BC. Oh, is that what you want? Okay, well, go through that entrance, all right? And you will see some people who will usher you in. When um, Taye got to that point, who did he see? He met some guards, two guards who were also spirits. And they looked at him. For God, how did you get here, you this human being? This is, this is the land of the spirits. Will you get out of here? Uh, okay. He picked his drum again and started to beat it. How are you, my friend, Mr. Spirits? Mr. God? Eh? Mr. How are you, my friend, Mr. God? Mi how do you do, Mr. God? Sing and dance with me, Mr. God. Oh, <laughs> this guy dance and dance and dance and enjoy themselves. <laughs> this is you, this human being. <laughs> you are so funny. You play the drum so well. Okay, what, 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 can, what can we do for you? And um, Tai looked at them and said, Well, I, I, I need you to um, uh, tell your king to release my wife at DBC for me. Is that what you want? Okay, fine. Go through that entrance. Uh, you will meet some people there who will help you. Okay. When Taye passed through that, that entrance, who did he see again? The king's advisors. There were two of them. Uh -uh. They wondered how he got there and they were, uh, who, allowed, who allowed this human being to pass through this point? My friend, will you get out of here now before we punch your nose? Oh, uh, you know what Taye did as usual? He picked his drum and started to play. Mukulu, mukeke, mukulu, mukeke, mukulu, mukeke, mukulu, mukeke. Oh my God! This time around, these guy, these are the king's advisors. They dance and dance and dance, <laughs> and they started to laugh. Oh, who gave you this kind of talent? Oh, you are so talented. Ha! Ah, 
Anyway, what do you want us to do for you? He thought for a while and said, well, um, what I have come for is to ask your king to release my wife at DBC for me. Is that what you want? Okay, pastors, go straight. Um, by the way, uh, let's do it this way. All right, we shall come along with us. We'll take you there. We'll take you to the king's place. When they brought him close to the king, the king was very angry. And the king got up. Who allowed this human being to my palace? What is going on here? The guards and, and the spirit. I, I, will, I will sack all of you. How did he get here? And then, Tai was timid. He was shaking and trembling. But he knew why he was there. And again, he looked at the king and picked his drum and started to play. The king looked at him. Ah, ah. Gentleman, Mr. What, what is your name? He said, I, I am Taye, your major. You are Taye? Oh my, you are so blessed. You play the drum so well. Hey, look at me sweating. Hey, and the king's advisor, they clapped for the king as he danced. And he looked at Taye and said, ah, what can I do for this gentleman now? What exactly do you want me to do for you? And do you know what Taye said? Uh, he said, your majesty, I want my wife, um, uh, Adebisi, to please come back to me. That's all I want. The king looked at him. Is that what you want? Is that, is that what you want? Sir, your majesty, that's all I want. Okay. The king now called his advisors. They asked her to go out of the palace. They had a brief meeting and then they consulted with themselves. Um, okay, okay, is that what you, okay. Okay, fine. Then they called him back to the palace. They said, okay, yes, we have thought about your request. You know what we'll do? I will grant you your request. I'm going to ask your wife, Adebisi, to come along with you. But one thing, you must not look back. I'm going to ask her to come behind you. Don't look back at any point in time, okay? Because if you look back, your wife will disappear. And Taye said he was pleased with that, uh, the king's... Uh, 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 Instruction, advice, yes. So as they were going, the wife was behind Taye, and Taye was in front, and they were going on the journey. Ha! Ah, and they were singing. Adebisi Konga, ko ko, sing along. Adebisi Konga, ko ko ko. At last, my wife is here with me. Ko ko Konga. Adebisi Konga, Ko, Ko, Kong. As they were singing and dancing, the wife was behind. They enjoyed the dance and the drumming so well that at some point, as the dancing was going on, Adebisi Konga, Ko, Ko, Konga, the, 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 uh, uh, tired the drummer, played the drum, played it, played it, played it, played it. Suddenly, he looked back, he wanted to look at the beautiful wife. Suddenly, the wife disappeared. Eh? The wife? Can you imagine? And he was wondering, where is my wife? Where is, uh, where is her DBC? Oh my God. But she was here dancing with me just now. Ha. Huh. And he said, oh, what am I going to do now? He became confused. And then he went back to the king's palace. You know, the king had warned him not to look back. When he got to the palace, the guards did not allow him to enter. They told him, will you go straight back? Because you have been warned. That's why your wife disappeared into thin air. He was confused. He went back home very sad. And everything collapsed. He was so confused. And that's how Taye became frustrated. Now, children, what exactly do you think that we have learned for, from this lesson, children? Yes, anybody can tell me? Yes? You should always obey. Yes, who else can tell me what you have learned? Can you tell me? 
What have we learned from this uh, story? You should always obey. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for him. Yes, I want one more person. Yes, what, what have we learned from this story? Speak up, speak up. Obey what you have been told. It is good to obey, so especially from elders. Okay? Let's put hands together for, for ourselves. Lovely children. Sorio, sorio, sorry, regrette. A work of story, oh, ye mama. Ah, eh, sorry, I'll do. Oh, ye mama. Sorry, I'll do. Season's greetings from the Continental Kiddos Show. How they're made. Plastics. It's in your toys, your school bag. It's used to make your water bottle, spoon, and plates. It's everywhere you look. Even the television you're watching now has plastic on it. Plastic includes materials made up of various elements like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, and sulfur. So how is it made? The production of plastic begins with a distillation process in an oil refinery because plastic is made from crude oil. The process involves the separation of heavy crude oil into lighter groups called fractions. The lighter group of oil is then processed into small pellets, which is poured into a hot furnace and melted into thick and liquid plastic. This is why they classified into two categories, thermoplastics and thermosets. Thermoplastics, which is soft when heated and becomes hard as it cools down. Thermosets, these ones are forever hard, once molded into a particular shape. Once molded into various shapes and sizes, they are shipped to factory where they are used to package several products. Now you know. Big Daddy, that was such an interesting story. Now, children, I hope you were able to learn a thing or two from that. Mm. Don't you worry, we will be back same time, same station next week with more interesting stuff. Now, children, before I go, I would like you to be obedient, respectful, and be focused. And I assure you, the sky can only be your stepping stone. And the Tolu is signing out. Bye. <laughs> Hey!